a world where both the demon king and the hero who opposes him exist. The hero is the one who fights in the name of the empire. As for the demon king, some man, apparently the same king, says that this time, apparently, they got some kind of aggressive hero. So, he is the true ruler of the demonic kingdom. The hero gets his powers from this world and uses them for the sole purpose of killing the demon king. On the other hand, the lord of devils exists in order to kill the hero. Meanwhile, those who are absolutely obedient to the demon king are known as core commanders. There are 12 official buildings in total. From 1 minus 12, these are the cruel and powerful subordinates of the demon king. They say that there is no one who could resist them. But even demons like them have a hard time dealing with a hero. However, there is a person who has already killed the hero. Commander of the Zero Core, the Demon Eret. His identity as the Joker of the Demon King is a trump card. He is also the talent that Vladika values the most. And then a letter of resignation is placed on the table. The same Eret wants to retire. The king is silent for a while before loudly banging his fist, asking what he just said, before completely scattering all the papers on different sides. How dare he even try to leave him? The man literally falls to the floor, grabbing the subordinate by the legs and shouting that he would never let him go, never. He's not serious, is he? Why does he suddenly do this? The blonde man only silently looks away, not deigning to answer the gentleman, which is why the brunette immediately rises and begins the interrogation. Is there something he doesn't like about the demon castle? Or maybe his subordinates didn't show him proper respect. Maybe they discriminated against him for being that person. It can't be. The demon Erot, someone who is undeniably strong, despite being human. He has an irresistible power that cannot be obtained even by hard work. He is the one whom everyone reveres and respects. He is the strongest card in his hands that only he has. But who has the guts to mess with him? The commander answers in the negative, saying that his subordinates have done nothing wrong, while the demon himself continues to be perplexed. And by the expression of someone else's face, he can't tell at all what Erot is thinking about. If he doesn't tell him, then... Then you will kill me, the white-haired one finishes for Vladika, which makes him immediately ask again in surprise, and then grabs the interlocutor by the shoulders. There's no way he's going to kill him, he just wants to know why. Moreover, why say so if the commander knows that he values them? Maybe it's because the king hasn't sent him abroad for a long time. Or maybe it's because his body is itching to fight. The answer to everything is very simple, no. And at some point, apparently tired of this, the blonde guy calls him to calm down before a drop of blood falls on the floor. The commander's nose is bleeding again, but he only apologizes for soiling the floor, before at the same moment the man orders to call Eret's personal doctor, shouting at the whole castle. Why the hell doesn't he exist at all when a person is so sick? After that, the subordinate of the king sits on the sofa while the doctor and the lord are next to him. The doctor touches his wrist, causing a bright glow to appear between his palms before the brunette is interested in his health. Then, the same doctor reports that these are the consequences of the injury he received in the fight with the hero. The man says that he did not call him here to hear about what he already knows. The aura around him is getting darker. He orders to find a way to cure him in the shortest possible time, and if the doctor fails, then he knows what will happen to him. Ben replies that he will do everything in his power. At the same moment, Vladika invites the commander to continue their conversation next time, as he wants him to return and focus on his recovery, which is why he also orders the blonde man to be escorted to his chambers. The servants immediately caught on, but Ben manages to grab the blonde man by the hand first, saying that he will bring him himself, to which the latter tries to somehow deny but it's useless. The commander is immediately put on a stretcher and taken while other demons are standing on the sides discussing the situation. It turns out that he threw himself right in front of the hero's body when he decided to self-destruct. It's even surprising that he got such light injuries. Others have heard that Ered is still the second most powerful after the demon king, even in his current weakened state. Still others report that he is the talent closest to the master in strength, and they really respect him, despite the fact that he is a man. They're really lucky to have him on their side. The commander himself understands that he is in a complete ass. He just wanted to retire and live a normal life. And they say whatever they want. The demons bring him to his chambers, immediately starting to court him, while he thinks to himself, did he really kill the hero? Is he strong? The doctors understand that he has a fever, so they put a cloth on his forehead. Don't rush it. The doctors bow out, wishing him to rest before they leave. He's an Aru demon. No, Dion Hart. From the castle of the demon king. Fee, not a bit talented, just the weakest man. After a while, a girl comes to him, who says that she will take the cup as soon as he finishes. Putting an empty glass on a tray to that one, the devil shudders and then immediately apologizes, which makes the commander silent, 
but then asks her to leave the room. She leaves, noticing with special joy to herself that their palms have just touched. Already being alone in the room, Hart notices with a grim smile that apparently the girl hates him very much. It's a bit of a shame that she doesn't even want her hands to touch his own. Compared to that, the Demon King cares a lot about him, but memories immediately pop up where a man catches him for a late walk, and then reports that he even told the commander's subordinates to look after him. Then another, where he brings him a huge fried chicken, telling him to eat everything. His concern is too excessive. Arad is the only person in this demonic realm born with the weakest body, which collapses at the slightest hint of stress. He is mistakenly considered strong, and thus he became the commander of the Zero Corps, subordinate to the Demon King. So far, Dion can cram it all in for the consequences of the fight with the hero, but if someone finds out that he was just born with a naturally weak body, his own death pops up in his head, which makes him jump up and press his palm to his neck. The blonde guy can't stay here anymore. The other commanders will obviously consider him a new toy, because he needs to get out of this place as soon as possible at any cost and as peacefully as possible. He's going to live a long and carefree life, and the only way to achieve this is to get out of the kingdom. A second later, Ed, his assistant, bursts into the room, which immediately distracts the blonde from his thoughts and asks if he was in the world of people, to which he receives a positive answer, before the blonde pulls out a mirror cube from her bosom, handing it to the commander. Ed is one of the few demons he can feel comfortable with. He went to the world of people and brings trinkets so that heart could play and dispel boredom. But then the assistant immediately panics, saying that this is not what the man wanted to say from the very beginning, because didn't he collapse again? Arad only shrugs off that he is quite fine now, to which the interlocutor immediately asks what they can do for him. To be born again, he thinks, but the commander says that he is to blame. But that's not true. Didn't he stop the hero for the sake of saving them all? No, it's not. And at the same moment, the demon turns gloomy, saying that he will find a way to cure him, even if he has to beat Ben before he wants to have a good rest. There aren't many demons who care about him as much as Ed anyway, so he's grateful to him. It seems that the king also takes good care of him, and it is thanks to the lord that Dion survives in this place. We can only hope that nothing that could cause a misunderstanding will happen. Meanwhile, the king is in his office, reading someone else's letter of resignation. Eret really was unpredictable from the very first moment of their meeting. He then literally just killed that very hero of humanity. Then the other demons started discussing it, suspecting that he had finished with the hero and blocked his self-destruction, which is even surprising that he still continues to stand on his feet. And then the king himself comes up to him, wondering what his name is. Then the future commander showed such great bravery and devotion by jumping into the center of the battlefield for the empire. Vladika himself could not believe that they had sent such a useful person to such a dangerous place. And then he gave his name, Dion Hart. If the demon king himself were in their place, he would never have sent him to such a dangerous place where his life is at stake. It was at that moment that the man invited him to join the army of the Demon King. After thinking about it, he became too free after joining them. But he can't send him on a mission. And then the brunette notices something in the letter before grinning. After a while, the Demon King orders a meeting of the core commanders to be called, as this should satisfy Arutha at least a little. He's very upset right now. Eret lost his chance to rest, as he was summoned by the Demon King himself, although he had recently asked to rest. So why this sudden meeting of core commanders? It turns out that all the other demons will also be there, and Dion is scared to death of them, and he will have a meeting with the commanders themselves. Does the Lord really want him to go to his own destruction? He'd better not mess with them, as he won't win if a fight breaks out. Meanwhile, he is noticed by some demons. For the first time, the girl sees a man with her own eyes, about whom there are rumors, but still can't remember his name. And the guy next to her grins and orders to listen carefully, since he himself saw how the commander killed the hero. And then, when Vladika asked what his name was, he answered dispassionately, I am the demon Erat. The blonde man himself, who caught a glimpse of this conversation, is completely sure that he introduced himself as Dion Hart, noticing his facial expressions, as well as a bad mood, and the guy even heard that he had accumulated a lot of stress due to the inability to fight, therefore he offers them to go to another place until he decided to kill them. Yes, as if the commander can, he is 100% weak. And why does he get the feeling that over time misunderstandings only get bigger? But it's worth paying tribute, since at least no one contacts him. If he is caught here, he will die immediately, so he must not let anyone know that he is weak before he gets out of the demonic realm. 
Eret should behave confidently, so as not to show fear of anyone. After that, he is surprised to be noticed by the guards, whom he asks to open the door. Already inside, almost in pitch darkness, the Demon King and the rest of the commanders are sitting. Vladika, of course, immediately notices him, while the blonde himself cannot understand what kind of atmosphere reigns in the air. The commander of the First Corps, Jaikar, says that he needs to sit down with the Demon King. The commander of the Third, Asild, reflects that Dion seems weak, but he himself cannot believe that he is so strong. That's why he would like to fight him. The commander of the Sixth Corps, Velatin, is indignant at his tardiness, before he gets a slap on the shoulder from the commander of the Fourth Corps, Edelia. The commander of the Eleventh Corps, Ririnal, is outraged that Velatin shows disrespect to Lord Eret. The latter sits down on the left side of the Lord, not understanding why there are so many commanders here. He wants to go back to the room. Vladika politely asks him how he feels, which is why Hart apologizes for being late. But he asks not to worry because the subordinate was not late on purpose. In fact, of course, on purpose and quite deliberately, since he did not want to come here from the very beginning. Here the blonde man is hailed by a servant, who informs him that he will pour it for him, while Eret watches this with a serious face, and inside he rejoices like a child. When meetings are held in the demonic realm, you can drink as much expensive alcohol as you want. That's the only reason why Dion is here, despite his reluctance. But then comes a sharp realization. It's not alcohol. It's grape juice. There is a tight silence in the hall. The commander of the Zero Squad awkwardly says out loud that it tastes exactly like alcohol. They discriminate against him, right? The king asks him to stop, as he asked to do it himself. But he really doesn't understand why Vladika did this. Maybe a man is trying to save on alcohol because he found out that subordinates are so useless. Did he manage to find out something about him? In that case, they were all gathered here to kill him. The demon asks you to listen to him before he gets angry, because that's why he called this meeting. He asks the commander of the Sixth Corps to share the details of the document that he presented to him. The man immediately starts talking, saying that although the Twelfth Corps has defended the village so far, their numbers have increased dramatically, and the Corps can no longer cope with them. After the demonic monsters destroyed half of the small village, they evacuated the remaining residents to a large walled city. However, they don't know when there will be an ambush, so they need more reinforcements to hunt down the demonic monsters. Immediately, many begin to whisper, not understanding whether the commander of the Twelfth Corps is absent for this reason. Because these are just demonic monsters, but even they can become a formidable opponent if they unite in groups. But these are just failed products, aren't they? They made such a fuss, but Arad agrees with them. Demonic monsters, among the demons that the Demon King created, these are creatures loyal only to their instincts and desires. They are unsuccessful products. He himself cannot believe that the commander of the Twelfth Corps could lose to them. But what does this have to do with him? Velatin continues to say that they fight every day, because there are too many of these monsters, and the reason for their sharp and sudden increase in numbers is unknown. Vladika says that the now-deceased hero killed them, which is not surprising that he was killed himself. Lord Eret was the one who killed him. But it's not like that. Are they going to kill him using this as an excuse? But, first of all, he didn't do it. Moreover, wasn't the Demon King the one who tried to kill him in the first place? Noticing the frightened look of his ward, the demon immediately smiles and says that he should not worry, because the Zero Core will be sent as reinforcements, which is why Eret only declines more, while the Lord himself is 100% sure that he will like it and he will relieve stress. The commander of the Sixth Core notices to himself that he speaks as if he is sending him to patrol the neighborhood. Apparently, the Demon King believes that Dion can do what the commander of the Twelfth Core could not. How strong is he then that a man trusts him so much? The blonde guy tries to get away, saying that his body is not in perfect condition, mentally begging him not to force him to go while Jaikar and Asild, who are discussing the blonde. The commander of the First Corps was sure that he would begin to justify himself and say that he did not want to after he heard the report. But most likely, he suppresses the desire to rage in himself, calmly assessing the state of his body. And even though he still doesn't trust him, but Arat behaves like a great commander. Asild only smiles, since the commander of the Zero Corps is not only strong, but also able to make correct judgments, which is why his desire to fight with him has only increased. The Demon King gives his voice again, saying that he does not want to overexert him, but only asks him to take command of the Zero Corps and relieve tension in this village. It should be easy for him, right? It's hard. There is no way he's going there, that's what he wants to say. But I don't think Hart can voice it. He decided he didn't care if the Demon King allowed it. Eret would definitely escape from this damn demonic realm. 
That's why he agrees to go. After a while, the commander is already riding in some kind of carriage, while he himself looks almost dying. This day has come after all. Ever since he tried to escape, that day was getting closer. The demon king caught him even collecting luggage for escape, thinking that it was for going to the front, because Erot himself could not tell him that he was escaping to the empire, and even there everything is not so simple. The crazy emperor who sent Dion to the demon lord himself, and a brother who hates him to death. But it's better than dying instantly among monsters, right? No, it's better to think in a positive way. He's heard that Zero Core and Ed Autumn are competent, so Hart is confident that he can easily sneak out by playing his part while they take care of the rest. Someone from the squad informs the blonde about their approach to the village, which is why he orders them to stay in their ranks and not lose vigilance. Inside the carriage, Era thinks that there will be no reason for his intervention, especially since the king himself asked not to overdo it. But if so, he can finally enjoy his solitude, which is why he takes out a bottle from a nearby bag. This is a special wine of the Demon Kingdom, a rare wine that is made only in their kingdom, having an exquisite taste, for which it is loved. He couldn't knock it out in time because of the Demon King, but they are definitely wrong if they think that Eret won't be able to drink. And yes, he stole it after the meeting. And they say that this wine is so beautiful that you can go to the other world from pleasure. That is why the commander should try it at least before he dies. After taking a couple of sips, Dion immediately realizes that he finally feels alive. Meanwhile, Ed notices that he is quiet. Maybe he doesn't feel well. Perhaps it's because of an incident that happened before leaving. Before entering the carriage, Arutha is stopped by some demon who knows that he wants to ride, but asks him to still use the carriage until he is fully recovered. Hart doesn't really understand him because he already had to go in a carriage, because he didn't want to ride a horse at all. He just replies, well, okay, and goes inside, while an assistant remains outside, who looks anxiously through the curtained window. The man has been serving him for a long time, so he can say with full confidence that the commander really wanted to ride a horse. And since Eret constantly suppresses his desires, he wants to tell him that he can do whatever he wants. But because of the order of the demon king, who was so worried about the health of his chief captain, he cannot. Then the lieutenant is hailed, saying that there is a village ahead. She's absolutely on fire. What a horror. Apparently, the demonic monsters have already combed this area and left. Ed is sure they haven't gone that far, so they should go and check, but he can't finish as soon as he turns around. Demonic monsters are shown in all their glory in front of the Zero Core. Were they really waiting for them at the very entrance? Everyone get ready for battle. They need to fight for Sarah Rutha, who depends on them. Unsuccessful products are instantly thrown at the demons who have raised their weapons. They try to stand up to the end, fighting off monsters, but at some point Ed realizes that there is no end to them, before someone sharply warns him, and a monster hangs over him, which looks a little like a bear. He lost his vigilance. Meanwhile, in the demon castle, someone is asking the lord if only the zero core will be enough. He asks again about the unsuccessful products, before Jaycar again hints that reinforcements should be sent, since the number of monsters is too high. But the ruler only says that everything is fine and that the Zero Core is strong. Besides, even if they find themselves in real danger, they have him. Indeed, literally at the same second, the bear's carcass is pierced by the Eret's blade several times, while blood splashes in all directions. Surprised, Ed immediately jumps up from his seat, calling his commander, before thanking him for help which he was just about to ask for, but then the end of someone else's sharp blade appears near his face. He on himself wonders if he is an enemy. The startled blonde immediately notices that this may be due to Sir's strange addiction to alcohol, but at the same time responds negatively, he is not an enemy. Then the blonde man asks if he is an enemy here, pointing to a huge monster that appeared behind his back. The monster instantly sends the commander a few meters back with one blow, causing him to crash into a stone, splitting it in half. Ed only manages to call out to Hart in surprise, while the latter spits blood again and then grins, saying that it must be him after all, and then rises from his seat, and then start hacking monsters one by one. Consumed by madness, the consciousness is only enough to distinguish the enemy. The demons of the squad are only surprised by such strength when discussing the main commander. Don't leave a single corpse. Even if the enemy seems dead, do not stop striking. Instill fear in your enemies. That's how he managed to survive in this world with a weak body. Meanwhile, in another throne room, someone reports that he saw the Zero Commander. A soldier sent to explore the Demon Realm reported that this time Eret participated in the conquest. He was extremely strong and cruel, according to the rumors. The guy also heard that the commander is the most valuable talent of the Demon King. 
The Emperor, Eduardo Desert, says it makes him miss someone. And if they want to get out of the demon realm in this way, then they should also prepare. It seems he has the perfect candidate too. He's going to give the guy who reported all this a special opportunity to succeed. He immediately accepts the royal decree, while the Emperor asks why he should not become such a talent. Eighth Year Battle For the glory of the Empire, this place is drenched in blood. Among them, with the noble sacrifice of the vanguard at the forefront, there is a whole bloody Dion, who looks at the corpses and thinks that they are only meat shields for the Empire. It's a living hell. Everyone shouted that it was necessary to fight for life and death for the Empire. He didn't want to go to this hell, didn't want to risk his life fighting. For the Empire, what a funny joke. Hart didn't want any of this. He has absolutely no intentions to sacrifice himself for the Empire, which sent him to this hell. He did everything he could to survive. Eret refuses to die because of their desires. He had to survive no matter what and take revenge on them. But at the same moment, his eyes open wide. I think it was a dream. Did he dream of anything meaningful at all? He gets up and looking around the room, realizes that this is his room while he is being called from the side. Ed and Ben stand side by side while the first one reports that the commander slept all day, while the doctor says that he managed to finish the treatment during this time. But does he know how shocked he was when the commander burst and covered in blood? The blonde one does not understand at all what they are talking about, while the lieutenant reports that the mission was successful, since everyone ran away in fear. They return to the castle to heal him after he fell. The man immediately apologizes, if only he was stronger, then. But the surprised heart doesn't understand a damn thing until the doctor enters the conversation. Ben says he has temporary amnesia, as it was a pretty serious injury. He was knocked down by a demonic beast, but he immediately stood up, so he did not attach much importance to it. The man immediately grabs his face in amazement. All these memories popping up in my head. What do they mean? Did he get drunk and cause trouble? It seems that Eret drank too much, so he lost consciousness, and not because of some kind of injury. Most likely, he was badly beaten. There was nothing to fool around while drunk. Meanwhile, the doctor says with admiration that he heard that the Zero Corps completed its mission without a single victim, and there were so many monsters, it's just incredible. The commander awkwardly replies that he did nothing, for which the man calls him just a modest man. He really didn't do anything. Did Ed and the Zero Corps really take care of everything? The blonde one apologizes to the first one for intervening and becoming a complete burden, which the lieutenant immediately denies, saying that he was great, defeated countless monsters and was a role model as a commander. The doctor also reports that this time Hart overdid it. They know how strong he is, but because of the consequences of the battles with the hero, his body is quite weak, so it's worth being careful. What are they about anyway? How could Dion destroy so many monsters? Ed shouts out that they live for him and will definitely become stronger so that he can trust them and finally have a quiet rest. He's going crazy. Too much pressure, especially without a clue what they're talking about, because he doesn't have any abilities. It doesn't matter, he just wants them to leave as soon as possible. But as if by order, Asild and Adelia burst into the room, who immediately says that they were informed about his awakening. The man orders her to be silent, because the commander of the Zero Corps is just coming to his senses. The girl immediately resents that he is much louder than her, and why did he go at all, wanted to get in the face. The commander of the Third Corps orders to put aside jokes and says that he has come to pay his respects to Erat. Jaycar immediately appears, saying that they are all the same. If they came to visit, then it's worth greeting them quietly and leaving. Don't they see that a person is uncomfortable? They immediately apologize, while Hart himself has already ordered them to leave, but continues to think about how to make them disappear. Asild immediately thinks that he was too careless since the guy is so sensitive after the task. The commander of the First Corps says that he understands his feelings, but asks him to refrain from fighting in the castle of the Demon King and make sure that they do not kill each other. Dion again does not understand, because he himself does not imagine how it is possible not to kill one of them, but even to touch them. If they find out how much he has become, do not expect mercy. But then an amazing idea arises in his head. He should teach them to feel sorry for their opponents for the sake of their future self. They will spare him after realizing how weak he is. Those, noticing such a serious face of the commander, immediately apologize if he is angry. Hart says that yes, he is angry. But you need to communicate everything with caution. His voice should not tremble. You cannot show fear. The other commanders immediately tense up while he continues. It doesn't make sense to punish someone just because they're angry. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to show some mercy. Even if someone is lying. Even if someone is weaker than them, they still have to learn to show mercy to others. Let's hope it works. Let them remember this lesson well and spare him. 
but the demons unquestioningly say that they will keep this in mind. What kind of atmosphere is hanging in the room? It was more like a sermon, wasn't it? Jaycar also notices to himself that the commander of the Zero Corps is scary even when he forgives. Before he starts talking about what he heard, that he successfully completed the mission and must have tried very hard. The girl who left immediately reports that they are talking about him all over the castle, because Eret single-handedly destroyed half of the monsters. The guy almost coughs, clutching his mouth with his palm. Half of the monsters, what kind of ridiculous rumors. At this rate, he will pass off other people's achievements as his own. The blonde guy notices Ed's completely kind smile, which is why he doesn't even understand why he has such a face. Then Asild calls out to him, who says that he has also heard about his heroism. That's why he came to ask for a favor. The way the conversation is going seems ominous, but nothing like that. After he has fully recovered, the commander of the Third Corps wants to arrange a sparring with him. This is not just a duel with a simple demon. No, this is a sparring match between him, Asild, controlling the elite guards of the Demon King and by Dion himself. Sparring with him, the man just smiles and says that he has often heard about his greatness, so I would like him to insist on it. The commander of the First Corps notices that this sounds interesting before he thinks that Eret did not arrange sparring with anyone after he became a commander. I would like to see the level of his skill. I wonder if he will accept this offer. The girl from this, apparently, is also delighted, but in such a way that she reports that the Fourth Corps is engaged in information which means that a huge number of viewers are provided. Basild says that he doesn't care who she brings, just don't get in the way while Dion tries to somehow refuse. But as soon as he sees other people's faces, he realizes that he is not even able to say no. Why the hell do they decide everything themselves? Does that even make sense? He will simply be blown into a million pieces by someone else's hands with one blow. He immediately begins to say that it will be quite difficult to accept such an offer, since the guy has not yet moved away from the battle and his strength. That is, he may die. The commander of the Third Corps seems amazed, not understanding why he avoids the battle. And it seems that even Hart himself understands that Asild suspects something. Therefore it will not be possible to get rid of simple excuses. But then Jaycar intervenes in the conversation, saying that it's amazing, which makes future rivals look at him in surprise. He immediately explains that even against the commander, Arat has such confidence. He always wondered why the guy didn't participate in sparring, but now he understands. He just really cares about his opponents. They look at each other in surprise before Asild asks if this is true. The poor man still does not understand what is happening. While the commander of the First Corps hurries to explain, it was because of Isilda that the blonde man rejected the offer of sparring. Besides, not much time has passed since his last battle, so he is sure that it will be harder for him to restrain himself in battle. Asild seriously says that as soon as the sparring begins, it will not end until one of them dies. Dion is completely confident in his victory. He himself, for example, always knew that he could fight on equal terms against any commander, but he never considered himself a clear winner. What kind of crazy confidence is that? Here it is, the talent that the Demon King has recognized. No matter how it upsets him, the commander of the Third Corps cannot guarantee his victory or say with certainty that he will not die. He doesn't have the guts to fight him to the death, although it hurts his pride a little, but he thanks for this answer. Hart, meanwhile, is amazed that the man has given up. Ed continues to smile, noticing that even these cold-blooded and furious demons treat the guy with such respect. Meanwhile, Har still does not understand why, but it seems to him that everything is not so simple. And then Asild reports that he has not completely given up yet, and when he has accumulated enough strength and confidence to know that he will not die, he will ask for sparring again. The commander of the Zero Corps in his thoughts simply begs him to surrender already. Great. Ever since he made the promise to Sir Arat, he immediately felt such inspiration. That's why he leaves, shouting that he went to train, while the guy is not even able to stop him, and all the demons are just looking at someone else's back. Jaycar says that before the man did not have any ambitions for further advancement, and thanks to him, he caught fire with desire. Dion just mumbles that it's driving him crazy. Noticing that Tom is ill, Ed immediately jumps up to him, who tells the newcomers that Sir needs more rest to which they wish him a speedy recovery and are going to leave while the guy himself drinks water, thinking only that he urgently needs to escape from here before the commander of the first turns to him of the corps, asking if he could fight him when he recovered. He'll be looking forward to it. He literally immediately falls back on the bed. He must escape from the demon realm. After a while, the guy leans against some column, breathing heavily. He managed to get out of there somehow. Ed will generally ask him to visit members of his corps. Ben also told him not to sit in the room and do physical exercises, 
so that he recovers sooner, a sealed train's best. Because of all of them, he has accumulated an incredible level of stress. The blonde man, out of anger and a desire to be alone, kicks a stone with his foot, causing it to fly to someone's forehead. Three angry demons immediately turn to him, asking who it was. Those, noticing him, immediately get scared, while Eret himself thinks that he is finished and is about to apologize for everything. As the trio immediately kneels before him, greeting the commander of the Zero Corps. They immediately apologize if they caused any inconvenience, while he does not really understand what they meant. They were just trying to teach a lesson to the guy who was blocking their way, being just a lower incubus. The Trinity will definitely take care of this and try not to interfere with him. He himself had heard that incubi were the lowest rank in the demon realm, so they were fighting and mocking him. One of the trio smiles awkwardly and informs that they will go, so as not to anger the commander of the Zero Corps leaving him alone with the incubus. It's a good thing they ran away themselves, even though Hart himself doesn't understand why. And what should he do with this child? For the first time he looks at a demon weaker than him, which is very disturbing. And the incubus himself feels out of place, because he has heard that Ered is usually quiet. But when in anger, he is known as more cruel than any other demons. He is sure that his presence has disturbed the blonde one. This time the demon can definitely die. But instead, Hart reaches out and offers to help him get up, telling him not to worry, because those bastards have already left. And the incubus himself notices that other people's eyes look at him not with disgust, but with sincere benevolence. How long has it been since he was treated with such kindness? He asks the commander if it is not disgusting for him to contact him physically, but he grabs his wrist without any answer. And what's wrong with that? If he thinks so, then Eret himself is a man, so is he also disgusting. He immediately denies it, to which the blonde only smiles and tells the boy not to worry. Most likely, he is also just trying to survive in the demon realm. The incubus is amazed by his kindness and says that he is very happy, because he has never been treated like this. He will gladly repay him now, does he have free time? Again, some kind of misunderstanding. For some reason, Hart has a feeling that he got involved in something unnecessary. At the same time, the Demon King himself comes into the bedroom of the commander of the Zero Sector, wanting to ask about his well-being, but then he is surprised to notice that he simply does not exist. Where did he go? I don't think he has anything to do. Incubus says that as a thank you he would like to give him a tour of the garden, as well as several herbs that perfectly relieve fatigue. Since the commander is a busy man, he will understand if he refuses. Eret himself is surprised that there is a garden at all in such a dreary and terrible place. Having answered positively, the demon immediately bows, apologizing for not greeting him right away, and then says that his name is Hyena and he is the gardener who takes care of all the plants in the castle of the demon king. Even in this kingdom there is such a profession, wow. The commander of the Zero Corps thought dreamily about the garden a place with beautiful flowers and greenery, and fresh air. Isn't it absolutely vital for him to go there now? He immediately says that it sounds like the perfect place to calm his nerves, so he asks the incubus to accompany him, to which Hyena happily agrees. Finally, Hart can breathe again. As soon as they are in the garden, the blonde immediately says that he is insanely beautiful. Refreshing aroma of greenery, fresh air. Yes, this is what you need. But then a plant abruptly opens its mouth from the side, intending to devour the elephant. Fortunately, the latter manages to dodge when the jaws collapse, before he asks in a trembling voice what it is. The gardener immediately grabs the flower, saying that they cannot attack Sir Arutha, or they will be punished again. This phrase seems to have an effect on them before Hyena turns to the interlocutor and apologizes, because it seems to him that they wanted to show happiness that he visited them. The same one remembers his phrase about looking at a demon weaker than him. Yeah, I'm dreaming. The guy is also abnormal. And if you think about it, this garden only looks normal from the outside. And such plants are only inside. We need to leave quickly. He immediately informs the gardener that he has something urgent and needs to leave. He immediately begins to whimper, saying that there are plants and cooler than this, if only to go further inside. But the blonde one shouts that he doesn't need it before he shouts about the training grounds, and noticing someone else's misunderstanding, immediately rushes to correct himself, saying that he needs to visit the Zero Corps there right now, and since he hasn't been there for a long time, he feels that he should see it as soon as possible. That's why he immediately says goodbye and leaves. Hyena sadly notices that the commander left in such a hurry because of his busy schedule. The plant leans towards his hands, and after asking what happened, he thinks that he too is sorry that Eret disappeared so quickly. Maybe they'll see him again. 
The incubus continues to talk to the plant, saying that he should meet him again and give him a gift, thinking that he also likes flowers. The gardener should give the most beautiful plant in the garden. He also hopes that they can become even closer with him. Meanwhile, the departing heart is still discussing that he still has goosebumps on his skin, and it was stupid to think that there was at least someone normal in the Demon King's castle. Yes, his room is the best, because it's dangerous everywhere. But then the commander stops in the middle of the corridor. Even though he used an excuse to escape from there, he should still check on the members of the Zero Corps. Since, being drunk, the destroyer caused such chaos, the guy kept putting it off. I was terribly ashamed. But the Demon King and Ed keep pestering him as well. The assistant never told him to leave his room and visit them and say a few words. But since he's already out, it's really worth showing his face. Compared to what we managed to see a few minutes ago, the members of the Corps are nothing. That's just the guy goes inside and realizes that there is no one there. Since it's empty, he should go back, but it doesn't look like anything will be solved if Hart avoids them. And he's curious about how strong his own core is. He bumps into wooden swords on the wall. Is that how they train? During the destruction of monsters, he was overjoyed, but he does not remember anything. Perhaps this is a good time to test yourself. But as soon as the blonde man raises his sword, he immediately leans down with a surprised gasp. It's so heavy, but it is not surprising, because on the battlefield he could not even lift a wooden one, let alone an iron one. Damn little body, he should just use a dagger. And then a sound is heard, which makes the guy turn his head to the side, and then he notices a lot of silhouettes. Members of the core, when did they make it? It remains to be hoped that they did not see him. They are immediately surprised by his presence, before they immediately greet him and begin to ask about his health, and he hasn't visited them for a long time, which is why they were worried. Moreover, they just took a break and didn't do nothing at all. Restless demons immediately surround him, saying that he was great during the fight, and then they always start repeating his name, which makes the person get lost before answering that everything is fine with him and asking everyone to relax. But the squad immediately begins to whisper about his tired state, that he overdid it and they will protect him until the very end, and they look at him strangely. Okay, better get this over with quickly so he can leave. Hart says that he planned to come right after the mission, but I won't be able to do to other circumstances, for which he apologizes. Yes, and they did a good job on the task. Since his training method is neglect, the blonde will give them the appropriate amount of encouragement, and, as soon as they start training, will sit down to observe. And he came in just to say it. As it is, I am sure that they would have coped with everything. A spy looms in the crowd. Dion says they can continue their training before his legs suddenly give way, and his body falls forward by itself. Damn it, he'd only humiliate himself that way. Arat leans on that very sword in time, while the spy pierces the air with his blade and shouts die to him. But noticing his blunder, the mercenary immediately wonders how he managed to dodge, to which the person can only blink in surprise, while the others immediately begin to ask him about his well-being. What was that just now? Did he attack him? It's dangerous, he needs to run away soon. And just as he is about to turn around, he accidentally drives his elbow right into the spy's face, causing him to bleed from his nose and he falls on his fifth point, coughing. Was he hit? But then the guy realizes that the face in front of him for some reason is painfully familiar. A man. Where does a man come from in the Demon King's castle? The demons immediately run to him, realizing that even if the commander of the Zero Corps does not know him, then he is an intruder. But then he gets up, grabbing his nose and saying that it's time to get out of here. But it is at this moment that the guy notices Arutha with his sword raised high and scarlet eyes in his peripheral vision. Oh shit. It would be dangerous to leave him here. The next second, the renegade is already lying on the ground with might and main. The blonde one rubs his wrist before ordering to inform the demon king about everything and lock up this person and after receiving consent, immediately leaves. The demons immediately start discussing the situation, thinking that the commander is disappointed in them, because they allowed the intruder to get to the training ground. But he was the one who caught the criminal. All his movements were so smooth and fast. Sir Eret, who seemed to be leisurely strolling, dodged the assassination attempt with unimaginable speed, and even hit back. In addition, Hart caught the intruder when he tried to escape, and instantly ended the whole situation. The authority of the commander of the Zero Corps is so great that it eclipses all other members. One of the demons trained so hard to be recognized, but Hart's skills are beyond expectations. They don't even deserve to be his toes. Meanwhile, the others are shouting that they can't lose a second and now, altogether, they will start training. And they will train until they become useful to the master, without rest, starting from this day.
and Arat himself is still kneading his sore wrist, muttering that he overdid it when he lifted the wooden sword. And since all the annoying errands have been completed, he will go to rest in his little room. After a while, the person barely gets up, because he slept very well before he is called out with a question. The demon king himself is sitting at the table, who says that he slept like a dead man. The guy asks if he is sleeping, to which he receives a negative answer. The blonde man immediately asks what he was doing with him, before Vladika apologizes for disturbing him immediately after waking up and asks to give him a moment of time. Hart asks what's the matter, but in fact, he doesn't really care since he doesn't really want to listen to the king. But since he came himself, it means it's something urgent. And if so, then, is it about the intruder? That's right, that's why the demon offers to walk with him. They go down the stairs to the dungeon. The criminal should be locked up here, so why did the brunette bring him here? Maybe the intruder said something strange about him. Or is he seriously trying to use Dion to set an example? Inside, the spy is all beaten and chained up. The commander of the Zero Corps immediately notices the mess, wondering what happened during the night. But instead of answering, the man grabs the prisoner by the hair and asks him to look closely at his face, whether it seems familiar to him. The intruder shouts at him to let him go, otherwise he will kill him. But the demon does not want to listen, saying that the incredible power that Arup possesses is capable of eliminating demons, even though that person is an ever-increasing power when it comes to him, the demon lord. Hart himself is in complete shock. Is it possible to? A hero, a hero facing death during a battle with the demon king must choose one of two possibilities. The first is to self-destruct, causing huge damage to the lord nearby. The second one, sacrifice your life in order to divide your power across the continent, creating hero fragments. Most of the heroes choose the second option, in fear of the possibility of their power disappearing. The Empire recruits those who carry these fragments. Unofficially, all the people who possess them were called heroes. But officially, only those who have shown themselves worthy with the help of exceptional achievements are nicknamed the hero, and they receive glory that cannot be measured. A person notices that this is done in order to use them at their discretion. But, after that, the Lord lets go of someone else's hair, saying that it's not funny at all to send a hero to the world of demons. No, it's better to call him a candidate or just a remnant of a hero. Arat thinks he's right. If it was official, it wouldn't be so weak, but he is still considered a hero, which means you shouldn't think that he is just a bargaining chip. They couldn't send a candidate without an obvious reason. What is the emperor even thinking about? Here the commander calls out to the man, and his aura noticeably makes the brunette shrink. He asks to be allowed to talk to the prisoner face to face. Having agreed, he says that he will wait at the entrance while he replies that he will be brief. There was no message, his target was only Dion. But what is the reason? What was he thinking? The spy says Hart is a fucking traitor. He earned the emperor's trust and became a hero of the empire, but he still betrayed her and defected to the side of the demon kingdom. Only the intruder could not finish, as Arid immediately starts laughing loudly, saying that he would never have thought that the message would be delivered to him in this way. It looks like he's got a bargaining chip in front of him after all. He immediately screams that it's all a lie, and he received an important task from the emperor to destroy the traitor. But the blonde one immediately stops him, saying that the truth is only that the spy called him a traitor. What sins did he commit, since he became abandoned by his majesty himself and will be thrown like this? The guy doesn't really understand why Hart puts his hand on his shoulder and says that the emperor knows everything. The reason he's in the demon realm, his purpose, everything. Why, then, would he send an underhero here to the dangerous demon world to kill a traitor? The intruder is still incredulously repeating that he was thrown like that, while the guy turns around and asks him to think carefully about everything before he dies. But the spy gave everything for the sake of the empire, and a minute later, he yells that he will kill the emperor, while the commander himself comes out, thinking that there is no loyalty and he himself has only wasted his time. The king is standing near the stairs, saying that judging by his face, he has satisfied his own curiosity. So, what are they going to do with this bastard now? Maybe use it somehow. Dion replies that everything depends on the master, but as he himself believes, the best solution would be to simply kill him. And this is the final verdict. If so, then the man himself will even take care of him, but in return he will do him a favor. The first corps requested immediate support. They conveyed that it was not a candidate. There was a real hero that takes part. The guy immediately tenses up. As he probably already knows, heroes and demons don't really get along. If the hero who appeared on the front line is not a few fragments used and discarded by the emperor, but a real hero, it means that ordinary demons are no match for him. 
and more than anything else, he should be interested in it. What are his majesty's intentions that he sent the shard along with the real hero? So, the commander will also have to take care of this mission. But at some point, the guy seems to wake up from a dream, not realizing where he is. Flatica says that they need to go so that he gets ready, while Eret himself does not understand what is happening with everything. Where is he going? After a while, he goes back to the cart almost with tears in his eyes. Oh, shit. Dion remembers going to the dungeon with him. But when he regains consciousness, he goes back to some crazy place. He keeps passing out every time and every time he feels like he's going crazy. From what the commander can remember, it is that the intruder will die. The demon king ordered him to go to the front line. At this point, Ed calls out to him, saying that all preparations are completed, before he replies accepted. And also the appearance of a new hero. Since the commander is going to go, he can afford to take a look at him, maybe at least calm himself down. After all, he's really interested. Ed, meanwhile, thinks that the commander managed to quench his thirst on a monster-related mission, but he himself is sure that this was not enough for identification. The blonde man heard that it was absolutely deplorable on the front line. However, looking at Erat, one might think that he is going on vacation. Immediately a person is hailed by someone from the air. Riginella says that she missed him a lot. That's why she immediately goes downstairs while he is interested in what she is doing here. Despite her cute appearance, the girl has the strongest demonic energy, second only to the Demon King. He will not let her appearance deceive him. The commander of the 11th Corps says that he heard about his train to the front, and then pulls out a necklace from behind his back, saying that she wanted to give it to him. It looks extremely suspicious, so you shouldn't take it, and why? She says he has a protective spell cast on him, so it will protect him from death at least once. It's not that important, she just wanted to help CMU. He immediately thanks her and snatches it out of her hands. Such a necessary thing. And it is clear to the hedgehog that he must accept this gift. What reason can there be for refusal at all? But then the person realizes that he involuntarily patted her hair, even without realizing it, just lost control. But Reginelle just laughs. This charming long thing on her head even looks more like some kind of tentacle. It's not very pleasant. But since she doesn't look like she doesn't like something, then heart is calm. Ed thanks her doubly, even though he knows that the commander is strong. But he was still terribly worried about him because of the consequences, and thanks to her necklace he can exhale calmly. The one that he worries so much about the guy. Which is why she blurts out that the lieutenant is amazing. She orders him to continue serving with the same attitude, to which he gladly agrees. At the same time, the drooping blonde man mumbles to do what he wants, while the blonde man comes to his senses and shouts to let him accompany him. Already inside, he remembers the consequence that he earned after killing the hero, while outside Riginelle says goodbye to them fervently. To be honest, Dion didn't kill him. He didn't stop him when he was about to commit suicide by explosion and also did not stroke the shock wave. At that time, he was just a comrade for a hero. As a result, they lost a lot of people on the way, but the hero asked Hart to stay put. He does not understand this, but the brown-haired man says with confidence that he will finish this battle together with the Imperial soldiers. And even though the guy is trying to find at least some excuse, the hero tells him that he has already done enough. Since the Demon King is known as the strongest in history, it is impossible to guarantee the survival of the blonde. They need someone to report to the Empire and the result of the battle, and he would like it to be Dion. So, let him come back. He needs to do something while he's still alive, right? Eret looks at the brown-haired man in amazement. He knows why such a famous war hero should be sent on such an adventure. He just needs more fame to fulfill his wish, doesn't he? If he returns with the result, it will be a great achievement. And since even his achievements are not enough that he had to participate in this task, then what did he ask the Emperor for? And as soon as Hart is about to answer, the hero interrupts him, saying that he will listen as soon as he returns. He will definitely come back. After a certain amount of time, the future commander is sitting on some kind of log, wondering how much time has passed and whether they are still fighting. His own legs are simply unable to move, and he himself does not know whether from fear, guilt or shame. Or altogether, the essence of the comrades is to clear the way to the demon king. But when he was asked to stay, the first thing that came to mind was relief. Damn it, Eret wants to live, no, he has to survive. After that, he decides to finally get up and look at the result of the fight. If they won, then Dion will bring them back, and if they lose, then it's worth reporting it. Everything should be fine if he looks from afar. But as soon as he looks out from behind the bushes, an oil painting literally catches his eye. It was over, and the hero was kneeling in front of the Demon King. 
bowing his head to the Lord. The hero continued to stand before the first one grins and asks about the last words. The hero grins before he lights up with bright sunlight that surrounds the entire nearest radius, which is being watched by a guy from the mountain. Self-destruct. Is this how it's going to end? He must report this to the emperor. But then some huge demon appears from behind and asks who he is. He immediately screams in surprise, while the unknown only mutters that such a small bug was hiding here, and then swings his huge sword. Because of the whistling of the blade through the air, Hart can only look at it with horror. A powerful blow falls on the ground, but the guy manages to bounce away from him during the time. He shouts to him, they say, why the hell is he waving his sword at all without warning? But the demon does not listen to him, again trying to strike, from which he successfully manages to dodge again. However, not quite, because the blade still grazes the skin on the cheekbone. Hart pulls out his dagger. At this rate, he will not be able to escape, so we must somehow exhaust the opponent. When he swings again, the blonde man rushes forward, repeatedly bypassing all kinds of attacks, before he runs under a huge demon at all. And when he turns around, calling him a bastard, he immediately jumps from the beginning onto the knee of the big guy, and then into the air, swinging his own weapon. The blade instantly hits someone else's neck, piercing that one, but the monster keeps looking at him, calling him a bastard. Isn't it too deep? At the same time, a giant palm reaches out to him. He knew it would be too hard to pierce his skin with such force, but what should he do now? And then the ground under the demon's feet begins to crack at the seams, which is why he immediately distracted from the kids, trying to stand on his feet, but still falls down a second later, while Dion only has time to grab the handle of the dagger. He's in total shit. God damn it. The body falls with such great force and energy that after it collides with the ground, a bright ray makes its way up. Many soldiers of the Empire just squint, they themselves are not able to understand what is happening, and a guy looms out of a cloud of smoke, who touches his face in amazement. Alive. Oh, right, an ogre. His gaze falls on him and on his own dagger, which was still stuck in him. Is he dead? Most likely, Hart survived due to the fact that he fell from above. Using all his weight, will he be able to pierce someone else's skin? Anyway, it doesn't matter. If he fell off a cliff, then it must be. The center of the enemy camp. The rest of the demons look at him in shock before asking the seventh commander who this person is and how strong he is. So this ogre was the commander of the seventh corps. So, not only did Dion land in the middle of someone else's camp, he also killed the commander of the demonic corps right in front of their eyes. But as soon as he turns his head, he immediately freezes. Isn't that the demon king? She's glaring at him like she wants to kill him. A moment later, another voice calls from behind. A hero, a brown-haired man is interested in what the comrade is doing here, because he knew in advance that he was going to use self-destruction, so why did he come? The guy apologizes awkwardly, saying that he wanted to do his duty. The hero hoped that he would at least survive, and then stops the self-destruct. Despite the fact that brown-haired is known to the rest of the world, he is unimaginably kind and faithful. If only he could be the next hero. The guy, still holding his friend by the shoulders, asks if the universe hears him. This is his last request. He asks the person in front of him to survive. And then his body lights up again with a bright glow, envelops and is transferred to the palm of his hand. The hero almost begs the universe to give him at least one fragment while the light slowly passes into Hart's chest. The demon king, noticing this light, notices that it is different from self-destruction. Is the hero trying to transfer his powers to him? Without options, how is this even possible? And then the brown-haired man falls breathlessly on his chest while Dion calls him a fool. The hero should have known that it is impossible to transfer his powers only by wishing for it. It's hard to believe that he stopped self-destructing just to hand them over to him. He calmly lays the body on the ground, and for a second he was interested, but, no, absolutely no changes in his body. He's still weak. Meanwhile, the demons are at a loss. Did this man just kill a hero? Apparently, this is so, since he managed to stop him from self-destructing and kill him. This is amazing. But I think he's in terrible agony. If he got hit by a hero, there is no chance that he is alright. In fact, the blonde man vomited blood again, maybe from the shock after the fall of the cliff. But it doesn't matter anyway, since he won't be able to get through all these demons. It seems that this is the end, and after all, he fought so long to survive. After that, someone approaches him, asking how he can laugh at all in this situation. This is the Demon King himself, who is also interested in what his name is. He has no idea what his intentions are, but it's in his best interest to play along with him. His name is Dion Hart. Vladika says that he likes it, while the blonde himself thinks that as soon as the opportunity arises, he will immediately distract his attention and run away, 
while the brunette asks if he has thought about joining the army of demons. Eret looks skeptical at first, before the realization comes to his head and he looks at the man in surprise. He decides to clarify in advance that you should not worry about objections from people or demons. After witnessing what happened here, they wouldn't even dare to think about a confrontation. Indeed, the corpse of the captain of the Seventh Corps, the hero who was supposed to save the Empire. He was trying to survive, but he never would have thought it would happen this way. It started that day. Everyone in the Demon King's castle, including the Lord himself, believes that Eret is amazingly strong. They should slow down. They have gone so far that he is mortally afraid of the future. Ed reports that they have arrived. The boundary between the human world and the demon dimension. The front line, where the incessant battles between demons and the Empire take place. And he came to such a place. Jaycar meets him, saying that he was waiting for the commander of the Zero Corps. And judging by the state of the first one, things are going badly here. He should have refused him on the spot. But he thought that if he did this, he would immediately die, so there was nothing to be done about it. From the very beginning, he had no choice. The commander of the First Corps immediately notices that someone else's face has noticeably softened after they left the castle which makes him sure that the person is looking forward to this battle. He immediately apologizes, as he is forced to disappoint him by the fact that there is a lull now. They don't know when the battle will resume, so Eret can prepare in advance. The latter does not quite understand what the demon means, because he assumes that it is a core. But no, Jaycar meant him. As soon as the Imperial troops begin to act, he would like Dion to join the battle. Naturally, this scares the blonde one. Does he want him to fight? The front line of the human world. Imperial Barracks. There, a man reports that according to the intelligence officer, thanks to the news that the commander of the Zero Corps will take part in the battle, the soldiers of the Demon King have been in high spirits since yesterday. On the other side are Imperial soldiers. But the other man doesn't want to listen anymore. What a headache. Why did this famous bastard come here? Commander of the Zero Corps. The trump card of the Demon King. Many are surprised by his presence, which surpasses even the commander of the First Corps, although he should be the strongest among the Twelve Commanders. And what to do? If this is true, then they cannot guarantee their victory. They'll send an assassin. A man with a mustache immediately refuses this, since he simply will not succeed. If the commander really exists, even though he knows that the rumors are simply incredible, but no one has been able to confirm them, perhaps his very existence is an illusion created by the Demon King to boost morale. At least, this is the theory expressed by the hero of the people, Cruel. If they can uncover the truth with just one assassin, then it will be a great achievement. Getting information about that commander is now a priority. At the demons, Ed binds Hart's palms with bandages. Does he seriously need to participate in this battle? Although he is worried about the pressure and the possible outcome, he has never worried about the status of the commander of the Zero Corps. But now Dion is really puzzled by the position he occupies. The lieutenant asks him about his well-being, as he is shaking violently, which interferes with the dressing. And then he tells Ed not to be so careful. In any case, the commander will just look at the new hero and retreat. The blonde looks at him like a madman before he starts to get indignant because they don't know when the battle will start. And the world of people is right in front of them. And their sun is rising. So he needs to be bandaged even more carefully than usual. He only sums up that a person does not really take care of himself. Of course, it's nice that he is so worried about him and treats him well, but Hart himself does not understand why the assistant follows him without any complaints. What is so special about him? Well, he vomits blood and easily faints, easily burns when he is under the sun for a long time. In any case, no matter how you look at it, Eret is just a useless person garbage. So why does Ed continue to be his vice commander? Maybe he's not a demon, but an angel. But when he says he's finished and it will help them cut out all the people, it's clear that he's not. The blonde then says that the fabric was specially made by the demon king with the help of magic, so you can fight as much as you like. It will continue to reflect the sun's rays, as well as regulate its temperature. Until it is torn to shreds, the fabric will self-repair. Dior heard about it, as well as about the fact that the Lord used a spell of transparency around the eyes, nose and mouth. And judging by the way he uses magic without any restrictions, his majesty must greatly appreciate Arutha. At least that's what Ed says. And the guy himself thought that the Lord had a lot of this magic, that's why he puts it everywhere. Magic is something that breaks the rules of the world. For demons, it is limited, and the demonic energy spent on it cannot be replenished. Also, saying that the more demonic energy is used up, the faster a new hero will appear. If he uses so much magic, then is he sure that he can defeat the new hero? 
When Ed finishes, he thanks him while the blonde continues. In this battle, as long as they have a commander and a zero core, they have nothing to worry about. From the moment the spy entered the training field, all the members of the core were training like crazy. Yes, he has no one else to trust, so take care of him. The man informs that he will go check on the commander of the 9th Corps and inspect the area around the 10th, to which the lieutenant immediately begins to resent, because it would not be better to save energy. But he says that he is strong without it. Of course this is an excuse. He's going to buy himself some time and look for places to hide. But as soon as Hart comes out, the demons in front of him immediately freeze, look at him with admiration. Some do not believe, others are crying because they have been fighting for so long and now they have nothing more to worry about. They will definitely win next time. Jaycar, smiling softly, thinks to himself that the Demon King's decision was the right one. His presence alone inspired them. Dion himself literally swears not to pay attention to him while the same assassin is sitting on some branch, clearly surprised that this is the commander of the Zero Corps. Does he really exist? Surprisingly, he looks small and weak, but this is an indifferent attitude and a strong pressure that the guy radiates, even though he is in a mantle, there is no mistake, but perhaps he is really strong, but the man is sure that the rumors are clearly exaggerated. He has completed his task, so he can go back, but since he is here, at the same time he will check how strong he is. A deadly poisonous dart is sent flying, and as if by the dictates of fate, it is at this moment that Hart decides to return to the tent, which makes the darts fly by. Did he dodge? But Dion's gaze clearly shoots in the direction of the sender. He was caught, so they also found him so immediately. The assassin immediately runs away from the place, and the blonde almost fell because of one stone. But then someone distracts him, asking if something happened that he suddenly sat down. There it lies that he started warming up, to which the girl just smiles and says that she feels calm. Well, apparently, there are no good shelters here. It's better not to wander around and fall but just stay in the tent. Meanwhile, the assassin wonders what it was. If he's coming back, does that mean he's safe? No, apparently. The commander just doesn't want his subordinates to know about him, a sneaky intruder. He must be going to inform the most loyal to secretly deal with him. Should he retreat now? But so a man cannot confirm someone else's skills with just one test. If it suddenly turns out to determine its level, it will be a huge plus for the empire. The next attempt will be the last. Already inside the tent, Ed is surprised by the commander's early arrival, but the latter decides to ask if the lieutenant knows anything about a new hero among human soldiers. The man replies that he heard that the commander of the second squad was studying him. He was wearing a helmet, so his face was not visible, and all that is known is his outstanding fencing skills. The assassin continues to watch everything from above. Isn't Hart going to report him? Then why is he asking questions about Mr. Cruel? Has he managed to find out that he is the customer? Dion sits down on the table and notices the bottle, which immediately asks what it is. Is it alcohol? Everything is clear, the lieutenant does not give him a drink, but does it alone. Seeing his frown, Ed immediately hurries to explain that he got it for him. A moment's silence before the commander asks if he can have a drink. He immediately agrees, they say, to calm his nerves before the battle, instantly filling someone else's glass. It should be alright. During this battle, he can rage to his heart's content, and Hart is just about to drink, as he abruptly freezes in one place, and then turns his head back. He thought he heard something, but when the lieutenant is interested, the person replies that it's nothing. Meanwhile, the assassin calls him a fool, since he was distracted by the stone, and he imperceptibly poisoned the drink the deadliest poison that kills in the blink of an eye in just one sip. The blonde guy still thinks he heard something. That's why he's calmly going to drink, while the man on top almost mocks him, thinking that this is the end of the commander of the Zero Corps. But the glass stops abruptly near his lips, which makes Ed wonder if anything has happened before Hart throws it aside altogether, completely breaking it. It looks like there's an insect among them, 